Okay, welcome to another video tutorial. Today I'm going to talk to you about audio, specifically about how you can improve the quality of your audio for screen cam purposes. When you're actually creating your own screen cam, you've obviously got what you're capturing, your screen, and there is the audio that's going behind it. Now you can really separate yourself and sound much more professional by having good quality audio than if you were just to do things not the way you normally would and really come across as being um, quite amateurish. I say that because in video, whether we're talking about full motion video, whether we're talking about screen cam video, really the most important part of your production is not the video, it's not whether you have a high definition camera, it's not whether you have a really nice looking picture, but all that is useless if you um, have poor audio. If you just turn down the audio on your television or if you had problems with the audio, you know, you would lose the actual message of what's actually being communicated uh, much more than if you were to lose video. If video was to break up every now and then, that would be much less annoying than having an unbroken stream of audio. I'm not sure why the psychological reason is for that, but, you know, it's very, very true. The, the message tends to be communicated more through audio than through video. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of real key ways that you can improve the quality of your um, audio, particularly for screen cam videos. And, um, yeah, and take you through some specific ways that you can improve the quality of your audio. So let's get started. Okay, to, to improve the quality of the audio, first we need to take a look at how, or how our audio is going to be captured. In most computers, there is audio capture hardware built into um, the computer and that tends to not be the greatest quality. The other problem with that, apart from having lower quality components, is that a lot of the time um, the audio capture components are inside the computer, obviously, and what that means is that there's a lot of electrical interference that's going on just with the, the computer, hard disks uh, you know, are, are running, there's lots of electricity and your processors whirring around, there's fans and all sorts of things that can interfere with the quality of the audio. So, Probably the number one um, thing to do to improve the quality of your audio is get a really good high quality sound capture device. Now what I recommend is to get an external USB sound capture device such as this um, Adderall UA1EX and I'll just hold it up to the camera over here. And what you can see is it's a, it's a USB device, it's got this you know, um, plug that plugs into your computer just through a normal USB port. It's got all sorts of ports and things on it. But what this is, this is external, number one, so it means that um, it's away from all the electrical noise and you get a nice digital signal going into your computer so that, you know, that doesn't de de get degraded by um, electrical noise. And um, this is just, a, it, this has high quality components inside it to capture, you know, audio you know, in the best quality that it can, as opposed to, you know, what gets bundled up, bundled with computers, which tends to be, you know, low quality parts because they're just trying to reduce the price of the computer. So that's probably the first thing I'd say to in increase the quality of your audio. The next thing that I suggest is obviously taking a look at, at your microphone. Now, if we're talking about primarily desktop recording, i.e. Um, so recording screen cam videos where people are not necessarily seeing your face, you're not out in the field, you, t you generally are you know, in a room which is plugged into a computer in a controlled sound conditions, then pr probably the, um, the best way to um, proceed is, you know, is to get a large diaphragm um, condenser microphone like this one here. This is a, uh, this is a microphone um, called the Marshall MXL um, desktop recording kit, specifically made for podcasting, and it's really an entry-level large diaphragm microphone. It you know retails for you know about $100, $150, um, but it, you know it provides really great quality audio. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually record some audio from this, um, so you'll be able to hear the difference in, in quality as I compare a whole lot of different types of microphones. So, I, so what I do, I take the, um, the output of my uh, microphone and plug it into the input onto my, um, of my, uh, my sound capture device. Now what I like to do is I, whenever I'm um, 
whenever I'm um, configuring up a microphone, I like to use this free bit of software called Audacity, which is just an audio capture program, but it's really, really good, and the price is right, it's free. And that enables me, um, enables me to take a look at the waveform, make sure that um, you know, everything is going okay. I'll, I'll explain what I mean in a sec. So I'll hit record. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. I'm recording the audio through the large diaphragm condenser microphone. If I back up here, and I play it. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. I'm recording the audio through the large diaphragm condenser microphone. Okay, now we see here that the waveform is well within the, um, um, the top and the bottom. Now you don't, you don't want the waveform to actually hit the top and the bottom because that, what, that ha what happens is something called clipping and that causes distortion. So we want to make sure that when we're speaking loud and when we're speaking soft, that we're getting a good range of audio through that and we don't want to get too close. This looks, it looks okay, it could probably go up a little bit more and what to, I would do to turn up a little tiny bit more is to go to the input volume selector on this thing, just crunch it up a little bit. Let's try recording again. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three, testing. If I play that. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three, testing. Now and that's much better, clearer um, signal. So that's a good recording level. Okay. So let's take a look at another microphone. Okay, the next type of microphone that we want to take a look at is the lapel microphone. These are sometimes called um, Lavalier microphones or lav mics um, or lapel mics. So I'll hold this up to the camera so you can get a look at it. And you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that you would see someone obviously clip to the lapel um, if they're, or if they're out in the field or if they're in a movie and they don't want to be, have their microphone seen, they'd clip this underneath their shirt somewhere. And it's, uh, um, you know, it's very, very popular particularly when you're out in the field. Now the advantage with a, uh, with a lav mic or a lapel mic is that it's close to you. So a lot of a noise can be going out in the background, um, but because it's close to you, it's, it's bringing a nice, um, you know, high quality, uh, loud signal compared to everything else that's going on. Um, so you'll typically you know, see these used, you know, out in the field with a video camera. So um, the downside of this is that these things tend to be omnidirectional in the sense that they pick up sound from every single direction. So when you're in a very, very loud environment, contrary to what I just previously said, um, it can pick up everything and you get more of the room noise, the environment noise when you're using one of these as opposed to using one of these condenser mics. I'll uh, plug it in and record so, I, so, you can, um, so you can tell what I mean. So I'll just unplug this mic. Plug in this lav mic, and I'll just clip this lav mic to my shirt. Okay, let's go to the computer and let's um, test um, some recording levels. Testing one, two, three, testing, testing one, two, three. I'm just recording this with my lav lapel mic. Okay, and I go here and I'll play it. Testing one, two, three, testing, testing one, two, three. I'm just recording this with my lav lapel mic. Testing one two three testing testing one two three. I'm just recording this with my lav lapel mic. Now it might be a bit hard to tell, but you could definitely pick up more of the environment, more of the ambient noise when you're using a lav mic, and that's um, that's uh, one of the downsides. Particularly using the cheaper lav mics, the better lav mics have a much more directional. Um, uh, pick up so that it rejects a lot more of the noise, but you know, this is only a $50 um, dollar microphone So it's very very um, Economical and you know generally you know, quite great and if you're in a real quiet room, it's quite fine um, But you know if you're under control conditions, you know, I much prefer a condenser microphone These are the kind of mics that you see in studios whereas you know lav mics are the kind of things you see on location uh, when, You know when you're outdoors, so um, uh, So that's lav mics Okay, the third type of microphone we're going to talk about today is the handheld um, dynamic microphone. Now these are the kinds of mics that you see, you know, people who, you know, get up on stage and uh, I'll just hold up to the, the camera here so people can see. So, you know, they, they 
like singers when they're on stage they would use something like this. Um, also news reporters would use something like this. Now why do they use um, this compared to the other microphones? Well it's not just to look cool or to look like they're um, you know, um, a singer on stage. There actually is a very, very good reason is that these microphones are very highly directional. You need to hold these really, really close to your mic, uh, to, to your mouth, um, but they only pick up a very limited um, uh, range of noise uh, directly in front and they reject a lot of the other noise which is coming from the environment and behind the actual microphone um, which makes it really really great in noisy environments. I've used this in extremely noisy environments with really really great um, uh, results and uh, that's why news reporters use them because they're under uncontrolled audio uh, uh, conditions and that's why people on the stage use it because there's lots of other noises going on like guitars and drums and all those sort of things and you just want to pick up the the singer's voice. Of course, of course the downside is you have to hold it close to um, your mouth um, but you know it's really really great under those situations. So um, let's plug it in and uh, see what this sounds like. So unplug my lapel mic and plug in my dynamic mic. Okay, let's do a bit of a test, so go to Audacity, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Okay, so that was a much better quality um, sound than what you heard from the lapel mic. It didn't, it didn't have so much of the environmental sound. I've got computers and all sorts of things in this room and you didn't really pick those up. So you know, uh, the downside um, was, as I said, I had to hold it quite close to my mouth. And the other um, issue is that you know, when I'm touching it, you know, the sound of me actually touching the actual microphone um, you know, actually travel through and are picked up through the microphone itself as well. So one way to get over that is actually just to use a microphone stand like the stand that I'm using now for my condenser mic. You can actually get a little handle for it that hold it up and then you have to obviously lean in and really speak close to it but that way it's isolated from vibrations from you touching the microphone. So, you know, it's a, again, it's a really good compromise um, and uh, you can pick these up again quite cheaply. Um, the condenser microphone, the large diaphragm condenser mics, these can really go you know, for thousands of dollars but you know you can pick, can pick it up for you know if you pick one up from between one and two hundred dollars that's probably going to be a decent quality microphone. It's probably the same for, for this you know from fifty to two hundred dollars to get a decent quality um, dynamic microphone. So and lapel mics can you can pick up from probably I said fifty to uh, fifty to two hundred two hundred fifty dollars as well. So you know, um, these are you know these are a good compromise and um, yeah do produce a really great sound when uh, used correctly. Okay, the third thing I want to talk about is recording multiple sources of audio. Say that I want I had two or three different people that I wanted to pick up with high quality audio. How would I actually do it? I've been cheating so far in the sense that. Um, with my sound card here, I've only had one source of audio. I haven't had to, you know, record multiple sources of audio. So when I when I do need to do that, is I actually use something called an audio mixer. So let's take a look at an audio mixer. So this is this is an audio mixer. So what this really is is really it's. it's you basically can plug in multiple microphones or sources of audio up the top and then down here you can adjust how much audio comes from these different channels and travels through um, to the output. So, um, and then this output can go into your, um, into your sound capture device and you can allow you to supply multiple sources of uh, audio. So, which is probably a good time for me to talk about um, high quality microphones and um, and their connections. Now, every single connection that I've used to date, if I take a look at the three microphones, they've all been these, let me hold it up nice and close, they've all been these sort of 3.5 mil or one, you know, one eighth inch um, uh, audio inputs, which um, tend to be more consumer, not really the professional connector that you um, would expect. 
Now, again, I've cheated with my large diaphragm um, condenser microphone because what it, what it has is this little adapter this, it, that adapts it to turn it into one of these small um, plugs. But if I unplug it, this is actually the real plug that comes with it. And if you look at it, it actually has got three pins on the inside. Okay, and this kind of connector is called an XLR connector. And an XLR um, connector provides a much better quality um, audio signal, particularly over long, long lengths of um, cable. Um, but it's just sort of a bit of a telltale tale sign. If you've got a good quality microphone, it'll come with a good quality uh, microphone connector, which is this XLR connector. Now, why do I talk about that? Because a lot of these audio mixing desks for microphones, they'll only take these um, XLR inputs. So let's plug this in anyway. So we'll take this, plug it in, okay? And then here's the output. The output comes out of these two cables here. And I can take the output of the, through those, um, those two cables and then plug it in, oops, plug it in to my sound card. Okay, <clears throat> so, now, so now my microphone is plugged into my, my audio mixer, my audio mixer is plugged into my sound card, so let's try and um, cal you know, um, set up the uh, recording levels correctly. Testing one, two, three, testing, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, I'm recording through the audio mixer. And let's play it. Testing one, two, three, testing, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, I'm recording through the audio mixer. Testing one, two, three, testing, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. I'm recording through the audio mixer. Okay, so now that's obviously with one source of audio, but if I had multiple sources of audio, if I had multiple microphones, I had them, I could just plug, I could plug another microphone up into to this one and then be able to control the balance of them so they, you know, so both microphones sound about the right um, level and I can have multiple um, sources of audio. So. That's great. Now, the purpose of all this discussion was in regards to screen cam video. Now, it's important when you're recording your screen cam again to get good quality audio. And here, and I've talked about a number of um, ways that you can do that through using number one, using a good high quality capture device. Okay. Number two, using high quality microphones. Um, if you need to be in in a desktop um, recording scenario, use your large diaphragm condenser microphone. Otherwise, you know, looking to use a, um, a lapel microphone if you're on a, on a budget or a um, handheld dynamic microphone. So they're, they're really, you know, th and if you're recording multiple sources of audio, you know, use the um, good old audio mixer. So hopefully that should have, um, um, you know, taught you a bit about audio and how you can improve the quality of your audio. And really, you will really notice it. When you, st you know, if you did screen cams just using an ordinary microphone and an ordinary sound capture device, it would just sound just quite noisy and echoey and and just not really clear. Now, if you if you start using professional or just high quality recording um, systems, the the quality of your video because of your audio will go up substantially, even if you have poor video. So, it, it's um, there's some real tips that you can use uh, when you're recording your next screen cam video. Hopefully that's uh, been uh, valuable to you. Until next time, um, yeah, thanks for watching.